Indeed, new overnight, one man is dead after being shot in an apartment complex in the Algonquin neighborhood. Louisville Metro Police responded to a reported shooting on Moore Court in an apartment complex by the Park Hill Community Center. That was around 2.30 a.m. Police rendered aid, but paramedics pronounced the man dead on scene. There are no suspects at this time. There were two other non-fatal shootings across Louisville since 11.30 p.m. on Friday. And the coroner's office has released the name of a man who was shot to death near that same Algonquin apartment complex on Thursday. 42-year-old Michael Liege was killed around 1.30 p.m. Thursday near 1600 South 11th Street. No one has been arrested in either shooting, and the homicide unit is investigating both of them. If you have information in either shooting, LMPD asks you to please call the anonymous tip line 574-LMPD. Well, this is the big game day that UofL fans have been looking forward to for a long time as they get a chance to bring home the ACC title for football against Florida State. Many fans made the trip down to Charlotte to cheer on their team, and WHAS 11 sent many people as well. Jim Stratman and photojournalist Jessica Farley talked to fans who made the eight-hour trip and are hoping for that big win. A little rain couldn't dampen the atmosphere out here at Fan Fest in Charlotte. Plenty of Florida State fans, Louisville fans, dodging some raindrops, but having a great time doing it because they told me the experience of being down here for what could be a historic day for U of L is just worth it. Oh, it's exciting. I mean, all the hotels have all the ACC like fanfare, and this morning we walked past Fan Fest, and it's just a really like hyped up atmosphere. That's huge. Consider we haven't had a team for several years, and now we got an amazing team with an amazing coach. You can just hear the excitement in those voices. It really is hard to miss. And that energy was on full display from fans of all ages. We're back. Being a sports fan all my life, and I play college sports, like, there's nothing better than championship games. I mean, anything can happen. It's just... Um, Super exciting to see all the fans. And that rain I mentioned, it didn't dampen any spirits. In fact, some fans saw it as a good omen given the history that Louisville and Florida State have, especially when the skies open up. Come on, Pete. They tore the goalpost down. Yeah. Maybe we'll beat them again because it's good at rain. Louisville's good at playing in the rain, so we'll be solid there. But the fans are going to have to get wet. And I guess just get down with it. Something these fans are down to do. Hey, I've been waiting to go to the championship for the last 10 years since we've been in it. In Charlotte, Jim Stratman, WHAS 11, on your side. Festivities at the Fan Zone resume at 10 a.m. this morning, and we'll have performances from the Louisville and Florida State bands, fans, uh, bands, excuse me. Plus, we will be back at the Fan Fest as well during our 11.30 a.m. Cardinal Countdown pregame show. Kickoff for the game is at 8 p.m., followed by post-game coverage live from Charlotte, which will then lead right into the WHAS 11 night team. You can watch it all right here on WHAS 11. The man charged in a triple shooting from over the summer in the Highlands is being held on a $1 million bond. Frank Jones III is charged with murder, assault, and other charges for the shooting on Bardstown Road near Bonnie Castle Avenue on July 31st. Three people were shot, including Ricky Kemp, who later died at the hospital. During Jones' ar arraignment yesterday, the judge read details about how investigators connected him to the shooting. First one was executed at his home, found uh, hidden in the attic. The clothes he was wearing supposedly and a ski mask, also a gun was found, matched the casings on the scene. If Jones posts his $1 million bond, he will be placed on home incarceration. Heads up, drivers. Part of the Sherman Mitten Bridge is closed right now. All lanes of I-64 West shut down at 10 p.m. last night. The closure will last until 6 a.m. Monday. Officials suggest using I-265 and I-65 as alternate routes. The westbound lanes are set to close again from December 8th to the 11th, and the eastbound lanes are scheduled to be closed from the 8th until the 20th.